Welcome to our home. This is where we live um, at least six months of the year. Well, seeing as you're going to invade our privacy, come and have a look. We'll just take you around the home. Yeah, you can see how these are constructed. They call it pole and daga. You can see this, it's poles all the way through. Daga is mud. So mud is stuck between the poles and then plastered on the, on the outside. Just with clay. And then this is clay. Yeah, all of this is clay from termite mounds. Yeah, and so that's how they do. And so these are different colored clays that they use to make the designs. And after every rainy season, they re-clay the outside and they surprise us with whatever design they want to use. And then, of course, the thatch is all from here. Uh, this roof is going to have to be replaced. It wasn't built very well in the first in the beginning, so it's about it'll collapse in another year or so. So they're going to replace it. Well, the baboons tore this thatch off three times when we were thatching this building, so uh, it's not too good. So we'll have to redo it. Yeah. And then, um, well, you know, we just use regular doors. We, I'm the one who insisted on some cement bottoms because you know just biting off the termites and the rats it's just such a chore it just really helps to have a little bit of cement so I wanted cement floors and I got them yeah if we'd been fully traditional the floor would have been the anthill clay with cow dung and perfectly all right yeah. floor and that's what I wanted but Jody wanted cement so we well the termites come up through it but we'll show you some cow dung because our fireplaces are all made of we're in the bedroom now, and our bedroom is very simple, as you see. We sleep under mosquito nets uh, every night, and in the evening we usually cover up with overalls, or uh, I put some shoes on, boots on, just so that we're not bitten, because we live with the mosquitoes all the time, so we don't want to take any prophylactic, uh, knowing how that might affect your body. And uh, we haven't had malaria, I haven't had it for 15 years or more now, and Jody hasn't had it at all. But anyway, the, the bed's made out of bamboo and uh, metal. We've got shelves under it, so this is such a small bedroom, and that's it. Well, but did you notice how cool it is? The beautiful thing about that is just how cool mm. uh, on the inside. As soon as you step in here, it's cool. It's warmer in the in the winter um, because of the the thatch, the insulating power. And, you know, these, these walls aren't so bad either. This, this is actually our office, and the whole of our home is off electricity. I don't want it. We have just little solar lamps or kerosene lamps that we use. Uh, but this, we have uh, some solar panels the other side, charge some batteries so that we can run the computers, uh, phone, anything else. So it's totally solar powered. This is a slightly different construction. It's the same Poland Arga, all uh, clay from termite mounds with a fancy design but here you have big poles on the outside and these walls do not go right up to the thatch so that termites can't get into the thatch. This is a common structure in, in the villages here so the roof is supported on these poles and we can watch these poles and see if termites are coming up them because termites can eat your whole home down here very quickly. But if you can point the camera up. We also, our telephone um, is up there. We get it. We have a signal, so we have telephone here, and that signal also is a relay to um, satellite, so that we have internet down here as well. Okay, here we have the pole on the top of which we have the various antennae for phone satellite uh, relay to headquarters and then it also serves as a lightning conductor and you notice our home is all separate buildings not one building because of the f threat of fires either lightning strikes which there are many here or uh, fires in the in the bush and that's why there's a, a burnt zone right around is as a fire protection my old home used to be like this and at one time I lost the bedroom uh, it, it was satellite, uh, but it didn't lose any of the rest of the home. Well, if a fire gets in, there's a, one hose pipe that can reach every hut to just keep the roofs uh, wet um, while we're, to prevent it spreading. This is the only place that we have electricity, all coming from the solar power into an array of batteries down here, the controllers here, and that operates our computers, the printer, 
um, phones, you can see the various wires that go out to the antenna. So it's, the, it's a place where we're sort of modern, but all on solar power, and then the rest of the camp, I, I don't want the electricity. We can be watching baboons, kudu, impala, elephants, various animals, and sometimes I've literally sat here working, look up from the computer, and there's up to 60 head of game or more out there, particularly when we've got water in the river at the time. Yeah. And late in the dry season, they'll come in here every day. But you might wonder why we keep it bare around. This is typical of what's done in the communities, how people live, and uh, there's a reason for it, not only for fire uh, control, but if any snakes are moving around, we pick up the tracks immediately because we get cobras, puff adders, mambas, all of these snakes coming into camp that you'll know from the, the tracks. And uh, that's why people traditionally here yeah, like to keep it bare around their homes, and we do the same. This is the bathroom, the nicest room that we have in this place. I just love it because uh, I want you to come inside. You can see there's a very nice bathtub in there. And uh, yeah, I think maybe you can see a little bit of it if it's not too dark. But, you know, having the running water, you know, that's just one of the luxuries of life. <laughs> so come on in and have a look. I, I thought we would have a shower, but Alan loves his baths. And so he said, no, we've just got to have a bathtub. So we got it and they built it in and I uh, thought they did a pretty good job, you know, in our little mud hut. And so it's wonderful. We can sit down in this bathtub when nobody else is staying with us. We can just look outside and watch the game out the doorway. And, uh, it's just wonderful. We used to use this as a boiler for the hot water uh, for the camp. And of course it meant using firewood all the time and a fire danger because we can get whirlwinds and so on. And then uh, as solar became more useful or more uh, lower in price, we've moved to a solar uh, plant, which you see over there, a solar heater. Anyway, this is the uh, solar uh, heater that we now have, and it provides quite enough for two or three baths, uh, even in winter. Um, as a backup, we probably should, for cold, overcast weather, have something else, but we haven't had, needed to use it. We face a constant problem here of baboons coming and wrecking it, so you'll notice here there's a snake, this is a rubber snake, and we just leave this near here as a deterrent to the baboons, and try and leave it out of the sun, because they'll come and wreck these glass tubes. We've got it oriented, to, the sun is coming across like that uh, most of the time, um, and uh, so we slope it this way, face it uh, north, and, um, and then it just constantly cycling. I don't fully understand myself how it works, but the water is going through these and uh, back up to here. But by the end of the day, and in fact, even after a whole night, you can still have a warm bath. Okay, this is the kitchen. Initially, we thought we'd be cooking in here, so we put in a stove, um, which we bought from one of the chiefs, found uh, second hand. And uh, we have a gas refrigerator, um, a freezer that we use as a refrigerator or freezer, and it's where we store some of our food, or most all of our food, and uh, we've got two doors on it. Most of we don't like doors on here if we don't need to have anything, you know, if we, unless we have to lock something up, but we have finally had to put these on here because the monkeys used to come in and they'd jump through this door, grab everything in here, everything in there and then head out the other door. So uh, we had to put the screens on to stop the monkeys from coming in. Um, but it's, again, it has running water, sinks. I mean, it's just a wonderful room. Um, I can show you the sinks over here. Um, so we can get our dishes done there, all the cooking utensils under there, perfect. We built our uh, home down here on this bank so that we can look at the game under the big trees across the river and so on and to get away from people uh, but we do like uh, old friends and certain people staying with us so we have guest huts like this a couple of guest huts and uh, they're very comfortable and simple and they're either side of the bathroom so that they can get there at night 
we do have to warn all guests and give them a flashlight uh, that when they come out at night to go to the bathroom to first look around because at times there can be lion or elephants right in our home here between the huts so you just have to be a little bit cautious at night but otherwise they're perfectly all right. So we have one building, this is our storeroom, we put the vehicles in, uh, anything of value, the guns stay in here, binoculars. So when we're away, one building is totally fireproof, even if we lost the whole home to fire, we wouldn't lose anything that's in here. So uh, as you see, the, the door is metal, the whole thing is just stone and asbestos roof, and you can come in and, and see that this is where we store anything that's... Okay. So in here, when we're away, because it's fireproof, the two vehicles stay. I have a, an old, very old Landwagen, and I have this very old uh, Unimog, Mercedes Unimog. These are one of the most incredible vehicles for the bush. You almost can't get it stuck. It's got a winch. So uh, this we use when we're going to the river, or in the rains, if any vehicles are stuck, this place can get very, very sticky. This is the vehicle to go out and pull anything out. Yeah, we keep the guns in here, the boat is kept in here, um, and then everything that the rats and the squirrels can eat, because they may get in, despite being fireproof, is up on this rack with only wire that rats can't get to it. They can't, and uh, the squirrels can, so we have to constantly trap squirrels. Uh, otherwise they eat things. I mean that boat, which is an inflatable boat, was very expensive and before we could even use it there were big holes eaten in it. The squirrels had gone in and made a nest and chewed the boat. Okay, so this is the inside, our, our sitting room on the inside. And as you see, we've got bird nest there, red-headed weaver. And uh, this is where we, in the summertime or the dry season, we have our tea in here in the middle of the day because it's nice and cool and shady. And in the rainy season, this is where we mostly live because uh, it's raining. And this is our, um, our fireplace. In the rainy season, uh, it won't have a fire in it, but it's all been, uh, uh, it it's, uh, looks nice and clean because it's been redone for the dry season. But this is all made of dung and clay. Uh, cow dung and clay uh, by Tulani, who works for us, and it makes a wonderful fireplace. It uh, raises it up just a bit, so we, and we have a nice, I'll show you outside, we have a nice uh, grate that goes on top of the fire, um, which we use for cooking. You know, the sitting room really is two pieces, one where we're outside when the weather is good, uh, with a similar fireplace, and one for when the weather's wet or too hot. So the sitting room has two halves to it. So this is our outside sitting room. As you can see, here's the fireplace again. It's a dung and uh, clay fireplace. And here's with our, our grate on it. And we do all of our cooking here. And it's beautiful background, as you can see. This is where I can sit and see elephants at night and, or late evening or any kind of game out there. And it's just such a, a wonderful view. And we've got the birds here. Wonderful. I was growing a nice fig tree just that side of Jody, and it had got up about 15 feet or so. And uh, one night when we were in bed, a big bull elephant came right into this part of the sitting room and demolished our fig tree. <laughs> Roofed the office uh, a while back, and when we came home, the Thatchers had very cleverly, as you see, put welcome home. Uh, in the thatch roof.